Okay, folks, uh, it's just a little after 11, so I think we'll we'll get going here. Um, just a big welcome to everybody and so excited that we already have 40 people on and to be able to share with you this session today and what we know currently as of today <laughs> about what phys ed can look like in the fall and the supports that may be able to be there to help you. Uh, those of you can probably see in the chat, Shelley Mulroney is here today to help me facilitate because in this forum with, um, with Google, as the presenter, I'm not able to see the chat box. So I'm presenting to you, um, but need some help with, uh, with monitoring that. So just to remind you, if you've been in any of the other ones this morning, the session's being recorded today so that it's available to other people from, um, from here on in. And I encourage you really to type things in the chat box, but don't be afraid to unmute your mic and, um, and also contribute to the conversation. I believe uh, with this one, if you wanna to contribute to the conversation, just put an H in the chat box and then Shelly can tell me that you're wanting to, to chat and then we can, um, we can open it up from there. So learning goals today, just exploring what we know now about what phys ed will look like in September. Um, as anyone and everyone in the education world knows that this may be current right now, but five minutes from now, it may not be current um, as we continue to get announcements from the ministry and we are working closely with public health uh, around what, what this can and look like in, in limestone. Um, to really look at obtaining strategies for a safe and engaging phys ed program and acquire resources to support your teaching. And uh, we'll show you those at the end. And again, these will be, there'll be more coming out as we know more. And lastly, I think one of the really big goals for me from this workshop is to really to develop a network of people to support each other throughout the year. Uh, I've been working with OFIA and OASPI since I guess we went off in, in March around supporting people around the province and developing that network. And it's it's been fascinating to see how many people come together and just want to learn and have somebody to rely on and somebody to bounce ideas off of them about what's working, what's not, who I can connect with, where can I get this resource, you know, what do you know about distancing, can I be inside, can I be outside, all those kinds of things. So I'm going to encourage you with this to um, type in the chat box and Shelley can relay to me what's what's coming in around what you're most excited about in terms of P in the fall and what you're most nervous about. And also, if you if you want to talk and you want to share things, it would be great for you to unmute your mic uh, and share with us those things. Because this is being recorded to any of the questions that go in the chat box that I may not necessarily be able to answer today, uh, we'll go back and can be shared with senior admin and with public health to see if we can get the answers to those, those questions that I may not be able to help with. So Kelly, not sure about what's allowed. We're going to we're going to address some of that today in terms of um, you know what we're thinking and ideas that we're trying to come up with to to support that safe return out, outside. Um, yeah, we're lots of unknowns. Yeah, indoor DPA. Excited about seeing the kids. Yeah, equipment. Yeah, we're going to talk about equipment.
Yeah, Sabrina, ideas. I, I, I think I think a lot of this will um, will hopefully what's presented today set your mind a little bit at ease. Um, and those of you who don't know, I was uh, when COVID hit in March. My contract with public health was not renewed, um, and I've just been pulled back in the last week to public health and the school board. So. I will be there to support and we've got some plans for the year so that uh, so that you do have that support. DPA leaders probably not going to happen unless you're within the same cohort um, of students. Yeah, getting kids active. Okay. So, as I say, this is what we know now, and um, we've, we've been going back and forth with public health and with the school board with respect to what, what is allowed and what is not allowed. And as I say, this is, this is what we know now starting up whenever we start up. Um, and as we move through, things may change with uh if our if our community continues to be um farewell with with COVID and and we don't have outbreaks then i think we will uh we'll be able to move through things and start to get a little bit further back to normal and if there's outbreaks we may end up going the other direction so what we do know is that there's no change to the expectations for phys ed um phys ed will be taught in uh, in all schools in Ontario and DPA should be occurring every day. We know that phys ed should occur outside or in classrooms if in inclement weather. Uh, the latest direction was that elementary students would not have access to the gym and that secondary students would have access to the gym if they were not able to be outside. And I think the rationale there was more around the cleaning of things in between and secondary students in theory being uh, a little bit more responsible. And well, as we know yesterday, I guess you're only teaching one subject anyways. So <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how that looks. Uh, socially distancing must occur two meters. Um, if the masks are not worn. So that means that when we're outside, that students do need to be two meters apart if masks are not worn. We're really encouraging the use of shared equipment. Oh, sorry, we're encouraging the, the equipment not be shared and that they be wiped down before and after it is used if it's shared. So um, Andrea Barrow and Eric Rieken are working with me around some correspondence that is going to is going to come out from the school board. I would think we're hoping by next week in terms of strategies for you around shared equipment. But um, one of the things that we we have been talking about is the idea of. Um, of, of classroom bins of equipment to be used. Uh, we know that hands should be washed before and after phys ed. So if we're going outside, have the students washing their hands before they go out. And then again, uh, when they come back in, as I said before, gyms at this time in the elementary are not going to be used. In secondary, it's going to depend on school admin along with the health and or the HP department. So masks. This has been, again, uh, a really unknown question um, as to how, how things are going to happen. We understand even at the board meeting tonight that they may be talking uh, they may be talking about our board implementing masks kindergarten to grade three as well. So what we've been told right now is that students should be storing their mask in a paper bag 
or in their backpack at their desk. And that public health has approved that if students can walk two meters apart from the classroom to outside, then they do not need to be masked. So as I say, that's what we know right now in terms of the masks. We, we had bounced around ideas around if students could take their masks outside and hold on to their masks to be able to use them to give instruction closer, um, closer to the teacher. But the, the advice right now is that they need to be in paper bags. And we know that if they're going in paper bags outside that they're gonna blow away um, so that they should be left inside. We looked at lanyards, but that was even the breakaway ones were not approved. Um, so yeah, just looking at the chat. Um, yes, Julie, they still need to be two meters apart outside without masks. I know sport organizations are doing different things and this is the unfortunate part about the direction we're being given in education in Ontario is that we're not playing by the same rules as as the sport orgs are. Different areas in Canada, um, they are doing that. They're doing exactly that. So if the soccer association says we do this, then that's what we do in schools. But currently right now that's not happening um that's not happening uh mark does the wiping of equipment only apply to hand contact what about soccer balls for example where only feet come into the contact uh again no we haven't been given any direction on hands or feet some boards are actually not letting you use any equipment to do with your hands ours is so um i would say I would say probably that right now the it's a blanket statement that any equipment that is used is going to be um, is going to be wiped down, and I believe I've got later in the presentation um, wiped down versus sanitized. Do you have resources? Yes, we do. We've got the resources are coming. The resources are coming. Okay, so strategies. Really, I mean, with this staggered start coming in, we really need to spend time with our classes reestablishing routines and building the classroom communities and connections. We know that as educators, we're not the only ones who are super nervous about this. Um, we're going to have different, like Julie said, you know, kids coming in saying, well, I can play soccer here, I can play basketball here. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? So really trying to engage, engage the students in the conversation, let them have their voice, let them have their input and, and, and coming up with things that are going to work for, for your class and your community based on the rules that we know now. Um, I mentioned earlier around the use of minimizing equipment, really encouraging you to start small. So starting with things that can possibly have no equipment. And if you are going to use equipment, coming up with considering having a class set that stays with the class. So in elementary, it would be looking at um, looking at what you're you're going to use with your class perhaps for the month of September and having that in a bin in your class so that it doesn't go beyond the cohort of, of the students that you're working with. The other idea is having individualized equipment that the students can keep with them. So for example, if you were doing, um, like, like Mark mentioned earlier, if you were doing a soccer unit, you know, that would be an option if you had the soccer balls in your your cohort numbered them off and each student would be able to keep that piece i know eric Vrieken was talking about they have broom ball sticks in their cupboard looking at numbering those off so that every student would be given a number and that that was their um that was their equipment for their unit and then 
after the unit was done, stuff would be sanitized and then transferred over to a um, another class. So these are the resources um, right now that have been shared provincially uh, that I've been working on. So each of those are hyperlinked in there. The and then you can browse them as we're as we're going through here. And I'm as I go through after this, I'm just going to take a, an opportunity to look at the chat and see if we can answer some of the questions in there. So the Ophia. Um, the OFIA, the new outdoor education toolkit, is secondary, uh, secondary focused. So really looking at health and phys ed from an outdoor education perspective. The HMP at home and the uh, DPA every day through OFIA was was launched when we were at home learning, and they have some excellent DPA every day activities that were done via Twitter, via Facebook, um, through that time, they're still recorded. So the safety standards, those of you who are familiar, these are the, the, um, the minimum standard for health and phys ed in the province of Ontario. Likely we won't be referring to many of those standards until we get back into being able to look at inner school sports and inner school activity. They are coming out with what are not standards, but recommendations for being able to teach health and phys ed in a safe way during our COVID world. So they are recommendations. The recommendations have been broken into elementary and secondary, and they will be released to school boards I think the first week of September, when they normally put out all of their updates to um, updates to their activity pages. Sean is wondering about sharing the link to the slides right now um, because they don't actually have access. Um, I'm just creating a tiny URL for you, if that's okay, Mara. Okay, yep, yep. I'm gonna put it in there for you. Can you, can you just put it in the chat box, Prisha? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're working on it right now. Thanks. Uh, the new, so the fair and square resource, I'm going to talk about that uh, in, in a minute at the end of this. This is where we actually get into the activities. This resource has been developed specifically for games and activities that you can do two meters apart in two meter squares outside. And um, many of these activities require no equipment. Some of the activities have one piece of equipment that the student has their own piece of equipment. Some of the activities have the leader or the teacher having the piece of equipment. And then there are activities where there is shared equipment. So the resource is actually divided into those four or five sections in there. All of our schools in the elementary panel will be sent out one copy per school of this resource. The money that we were able to purchase these from was, um, was from the elementary curriculum release, the new curriculum release money that we didn't spend last year because of, um, because of the inability to be able to train people with COVID and with, uh, with work to rule. So that is, that is coming out to all elementary schools. We also have a, another few resources from PHE Canada that, are, that look at fundamental movement skills that are going out to each elementary school. The resource is fairly cheap. I believe it's about $25. So secondary schools, it would, it, the games in there apply to elementary and secondary. So it may be well worth your while to, to invest in, in that, um, that one. And you're going to see a little bit later on here, uh, 
some of the games that are in there. And Prish, I may have to ask you actually if if they're not going to be able to hyperlink these if the games on the last slide, they're um, if you if you may have to put in something there so that they can see those. Sure. Um, any game for any brain is an inclusive resource for those with cognitive different differences and for youth and seniors. We did not purchase that, but it's a new resource. Peachy Canada has done an amazing job um, with their at-home learning center. So it's similar to what Ophia did in the fall. They did an at-home learning center where they were focused on healthy eating, um, physical activity, movement skills, and emotional, I believe it was uh, emotional safety um, or emotional learning. So they had done that during, during the at-home. They now have a return to school plan for PHE and they're releasing different documents right now. I believe it's every Thursday and placing them on their site. The last one was excellent. It was uh, focus on wellness that they had from not only from a PE perspective, but as a whole school and a staff wellness perspective. And they are launching slowly over the course of the fall. I, I believe it's 80 new activities. So whether it's a few a week um, with a focus on physical education, that will be uh, a, a game to do with this COVID world and not having equipment or very limited equipment. School mental health, oh, sorry. Sneak preview there. School Mental Health Ontario. Uh, Oh, Ophia, I'm not sure if any of you have seen the um, the offerings of the the webinars that have been put out through OASTI and Ophia. There was one on assessment done a couple of weeks ago. There was one done yesterday uh, looking at building community within your classroom, coming back to coming back in the world that we're coming back into with a focus on health and visit. And it was put on by School Mental Health Ontario, it was apparently excellent. There is a second session and it, it applies to both elementary and, and secondary. There's a second session happening tomorrow at I believe it's 2.30 till 3.15 or 2 to 3.30. And that, that session will provide all kinds of supports and ideas along with this SEL poster. Uh, Canada Sport for Life has some resources there. Asphalt Green is socially distanced activities. And then um, I've just put in there the way our curriculum now looks. They've got a new digital platform that the, is, the ministry has put out so it doesn't look like the normal curriculum document that we have and then a guide to to help them visit. So I'm just going to go look to the chat box here and see. Rob's added a link for people. Thanks, Rob, for adding that in there. Okay, oh, goodness, computer's jumping. Okay, so this is the um, this is the resource I was talking about, fair and square. And what I did was I took um, I took some teacher candidates who are in the faculty, and we filmed a couple of these games so that you can see what it looks like. So. The resource is set up, like I said, everything happening in two by two squares. And just at the front of the resource, it gives you different options on how to configure your space. So the most traditional one and the way most of these games are organized is with the squares being set up outside in two meter squares with approximately a meter 
in between each of the boxes so that the kids are playing in the boxes and they come to the front of the box close to each other they're they're still not face to face with one another my first question when i saw this was like how on earth are we going to have classes of potentially 30 with pylons four pylons per student so 120 pylons who has that but one of the um, one of the strategies in there, and I think one of the the best ideas that I've been floating out to people, and um, I know in another uh, almost all the other boards that I talk to are doing, is looking at painting, um, painting their fields or their tarmacs with these two by two squares. So at least with that option it would be available to all the classes to use um, one after the other wouldn't be setting up pylons each class and from what i understand the paint usually lasts about two weeks before it has to be redone so that's that would be my suggestion once you start thinking about that is to probably create those spaces for people outside that multiple classes can use. So let's see. Um, so five finger fling. So this activity would be familiar to those schools that I have worked with before. Um, but because we are not face to face now with students and students can't be face to face, there's a bit of a spin on it. So I will just let you. Okay, I'm going to go to the second one now. I'm going to try to go to the second one, jumping beans. And this, again, is very familiar to elementary um, students and uh, not really geared towards high school and doesn't really vary from the version that we would have had before except that the students are um, they're spaced out intention too is hopefully in the fall if i'm allowed into schools and have access to kids is to do some more of the um some more of the filming and sharing through the system each of the activities similar to what i would have done uh in the years past with the the dpa activities so just coming to the end here and this was shared with me and i think as as crazy as this all is and um as nervous as everybody is and just the unknowns of what is happening day to day hour to hour um with the changes that are happening we this really resonated with me we we need to really focus on on the kids we need to focus on the relationships so the relationships before the rigor we need to focus on the grace before grace the patience before programming the love before lessons so we have to remember we're teaching kids we're teaching kids first and um building those relationships and building those connections and being kind to yourself and um and to those around you and you know just knowing that we're we're there to support and that um that we're all in this together and we'll, we are going to make it through so um again i know you've you've been typing questions in here and shelly's been amazing at answering them along the way but is there anything right now who will be um wants to open up their mic and and ask any questions that perhaps i didn't answer um and prish has just typed in here that the video is going to be shared on the minds online support resource and um that will be a direction as the year goes on that i'm going to be pushing people towards is the health and phys ed course course as they call it uh on minds online where i have pretty much everything which is health and phys ed related stored in that in that area so that we're we're just going to that one spot and i'm trying to make sure that the stuff that goes in there is um is evidence-based and that has been supported 
Okay. Uh, Judy, how to clean equipment. So it's my understanding that schools will be provided with um, wipes to clean equipment. So schools, classes, etc., will be provided with wipes to clean equipment. The the answer I don't have yet, but I can only assume based on what I know is that cleaning the equipment in between uh, in between uses within your own cohort within your own class is good. So wash your hands, clean the equipment, and then if you're going to share it outside of your cohort, that's when it's going to need to be sanitized. So the, the sanitization piece is the piece I don't have the answer on yet as to um, if it has to be sanitized, are teachers and students going to be allowed to do that sanitization or because the chemicals involved in it, um, they may only be allowed to be done by custodians. So I don't have that answer yet. Great. Thanks, Laura. I know at our school we are, um, they have organized the idea that each class will get a bin of equipment. So it, we won't have to worry about the sanitizing if we, if we do that. Okay. Um, and that's what, um, like I've been working with Eric and Shelly a little bit, and I know Lancaster has talked about this as well, looking at the, the class sets of stuff. So that's the direction right now is that it just needs to be cleaned between uses. Right. Okay, great. Thanks, Laura. No worries. So I'll just keep the line open here. It's open for the next, I believe Prish has left it open for the next 15 minutes or so. So um, that technically is the end of the, the presentation. As I say, there'll be more coming out next week. It'll come out in a, in a memo um, from Stephanie Sartor around health and phys ed and safety um, and some of these suggestions plus some other suggestions on, on how we get started. But just try and try and be mindful of starting small, starting with limited equipment, um, and and just be there to support one another. Yep, you can use two meter ropes too. Alana put that out there. The only suggestion I was making with paint is that it's then versatile for. Um, every class to use and each class doesn't have to set up their equipment each class. Yeah, Rob, I think I think you can go for walks as long as they're they're two meters apart and you've got the permission form that says they're allowed to go off school property. Yes, I'll absolutely be doing the posting um, an activity a week. I'm going to try and do primary, junior and intermediate using the um, using these socially distanced games right now. And what I'm trying to see if I can do is if I can actually get them filmed as well this year. Julie. Julie, uh, right now the direction I was given as of yesterday was that you were going to be allowed to use your gyms. Um, again, the first, first priority is outside. Um, and then use your gyms and you are going to be allowed to use your fitness centers as well, as long as the cleaning happens between. But as I can only imagine what's going through the secondary heads right now like how am I possibly going to keep my students in one place all day long so there may be more on that to come uh, but right now it's my that was my understanding again working the indoor masks I don't have an answer on that yet um, if we're following rules then yes unless they're unless they are actually no it's not they're two meters apart like if they are working out inside everything's inside is supposed to have their masks on 
um, just working at a lower intensity. But again, that'll be a question, I think, Julie, that's going to be answered in the days to come. Yep, Sarah, for sure, classroom ideas, outside ideas. Laura? Yes? I'm, I'm just thinking about indoor DPA. Who's, who am I talking to? It's Sorry. Judy, it's yeah. Judy, sorry. Indoor DPA, um, when it's, it's, it's not even possible it's it's barely possible to keep them a meter apart with desks yeah um so what what do we try and then i i'm scheduled for a grade two three where they won't be wearing masks so it may not matter but it does matter yeah uh, i think but just I, what's your suggestion just keep them as far apart as possible yeah i so i i don't really know how they can possibly be doing dpa inside unless they're masked yeah so and at that, so that point the intensity has to be taken down yes if they're masked um there is a board meeting tonight and i know on the agenda they're trying to pass through that all students will be masked right so that may change yeah yeah but anyway, hopefully it again, won't be again, like as you know, outside, outside, outside as much as we can this fall. Yeah. Um, and really that's the safest place to be is outside. Yeah, absolutely. And you get okay. to take your mask off. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Let's go outside. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Can I just this is Shelly. I'm just I'm just talking through Laura's. Um just when folks are thinking about, we know there's sometimes five days in a row and it's raining and you're not outside <laughs> or, and, and so again, really thinking about, we can still do some activity where they're moving, but it's not high intensity. What, and you know, we just need to be realistic. So even if we're doing a little bit of yoga at our desk or just some really low activity, it still does the same thing to help their brains to, to kind of, get those kind of wiggles out and to to help them kind of refocus and and actually be able to learn so yeah that's my thing is just think about um yeah we don't we don't have two meters space inside our classrooms but we can we can still have kids move yes sarah tai chi cedar size yes judy 